Hi YouTube, this is Patrick and this is my review of Seven Psychopaths, new film with Colin Farrell, Sam Rockwell, Woody Harrelson, and Christopher Walken. Uh, I saw it last night and um, the director, Martin McDonough, did one of my favorite films um, in Bruges, which if you haven't seen that film, you must see that. Uh, that's one of those movies where you watch it and as you watch it, it just gets better and better and better as it goes. And you realize by the by the end that it's just amazing. And if you watch it again, it gets even better. And it just it's basically one of those movies now for me that whenever it's on, I can watch it. Um, this film was not as good, but it was more of a comedy. Even though actually, I think I laughed more during In Bruges anyway. But uh, In Bruges had a like a sense of like kind of like a profound like melancholy aspect to it too that this film had moments of but it didn't kind of quite reach i mean it didn't reach the you know perfection of in bruges basically that you know that's not really a fair um slight on the film because it was still very very entertaining all right i don't want to put any spoilers in here i'll just say that basically the film is about a couple of things it's colin farrell who's a screenwriter he's writing a screenplay called seven psychopaths and uh, his best friend is played by Sam Rockwell, who is a dog kidnapper, along with his partner, Christopher Walken. And they kidnap a Shih Tzu from um, Woody Harrelson's character, who's also like a mob boss. And um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the gist of it. Uh, I won't really go into any details after that. It's honestly best if you don't, um, if you see the film without really knowing anything about it. Um, just to say, it's probably, I would say the film is a mix of adaptation and Pulp Fiction. So, uh, if you like both of those films, or in Bruges also, and then, um, definitely check it out. Alright, the acting in this film, Colin Farrell basically plays the, kind of like the straight guy. The, um, you know, the, the thankless kind of role, where everyone else gets to be crazy around him. But, um, he... He was able to be really funny just with his facial expressions, just the way he reacted to anything, to everything. And, um, yeah, he really is like the anchor of the movie. He's basically Brendan Gleeson's um, role from In Bruges, pretty much. But he was really, really good. Anytime he can use his Irish accent, he's always better. So, um, good job out of him making up for the Total Recall remake and all the other bad remakes that he's been in. Uh, so, yeah, very good. Christopher Walken has a way of playing Christopher Walken and yet the character in the movie. I mean, the movie felt like it was written for him, this role, yet he brings something more to it. He has a great little kind of serious side story with his wife who has breast cancer. And um, so he really gets a lot of stuff to do on both ends of the spectrum, comedy and drama. And um, very, very strong performance out of him. Just, you know pretty much proves to everybody that, yeah, he's always good. He's always good when he's playing, you know, kind of the same role. And yet he really is a good actor when it comes to dramatic moments, like stuff like this or Catch Me If You Can or stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, he was excellent. The film, however, belongs to Sam Rockwell, who's just a complete, like, force throughout the whole movie. I think it's my favorite performance of him, of his career, at least for me anyway. Um, yeah, he's just so off the wall and somehow endearing and funny and unpredictable and it's really it's a really really great performance and um the blend of those three characters walken farrell and rockwell it's just uh it's a great trio throughout the movie the other actors woody harrelson and um a couple other people just fine at, you know deliver um the women characters in the film really don't get much to do but that's actually addressed in the film and um, it's done in you know a pretty funny way, and um, it's called back to a couple of times. So um, the writer director was self aware that his women roles in this film really aren't that good, and uh, it kind of negates the negativity of that. Also, there's Tom Waits who I thought he was just gonna have kind of like a small little cameo, but he had a couple of pretty good scenes, and. Um, he, uh, I won't go into it, but let's say his character is a character that also has, uh, the film also has, a, amongst its main story, has these little vignettes, basically, little short stories in there, 
about other psychopaths, and he's one of them. He tells his story. Um, so the film has stuff like that. Another one um, with a Quaker that ties into things, and uh, an especially good one with a uh, Vietnamese guy, which is a joke from In Bruges also that carries over. Um, these things, I mean, they were able to have this sense of, like, much more really darkly comic, yet even more serious than the rest of the film. And um, I love that entire aspect of the movie, uh, I think more than the, everything else. And um, especially the, the Vietnamese one actually had a um, kind of like a pretty profound sort of finish to it that sneaks up on you. Kind of way, kind of like the way, you know, In Bruges does. Sorry, I keep talking about In Bruges, but it really is that good. And it, it makes sense to compare it with this film. But, uh, yeah, I absolutely love that aspect of the movie. The funny thing about the movie is that it's not as gorgeous looking as In Bruges was. It's just because, you know, that movie had all these medieval buildings lit up at night all the time, so it just naturally looked good no matter what you did. Uh, this film's, you know, more contemporary, but uh, McDonough still has, you know, a pretty good sense of style, and um, there is a sequence, a sequence where Rockwell narr narrates a um, shootout in a cemetery that is just, I mean, I don't know, it kind of reminded me of Hot Fuzz, basically, um, but I think it was about a three-minute se three sequence that I laughed throughout the entire thing about as hard as I can laugh, so uh, that was definitely my favorite part in the movie, but um, it's also interesting to note that this is, even though this is McDonough's second film, feature film, he actually wrote this before in Bruges, so if you really look at it screenwriting-wise, he, I think, improved, if you look at it chronologically. Um, but, uh, but yeah, still, this is very, very solid, you know, sophomoric effort. So yeah, 8 out of 10 for 7 Psychopaths. It's not a masterpiece, but that's not, you know, not everything is. Um, still a lot of fun, definitely worth seeing. Uh, we had a guy in our theater snoring throughout some of it last night, so it's probably not for everyone. Um, know that going in. And, um, yeah. Alright, that's it, guys. Later.